friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with C's Up Stitch, and today is Saturday, October 14th, 2023. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm so glad that you're here spending part of your day or your evening with me. I really appreciate all of you. I just got back from the donkey sanctuary. <laughs> you see my shirt? Um, whoops, it's backwards. There we go. Oregon Donkey Sanctuary. Uh, it is a sanctuary. It's about... Mm, almost 15 minutes from my house, not not quite, just under 15 minutes from my house. And this weekend they are doing like a fall festival where you can go in and pet the donkeys and um, purchase pumpkins and, you know, t-shirts and they have a whole bunch of goods, coffee and that type of thing. So I got a couple of t-shirts, they're long sleeve, which is perfect. I got this one and then another one that they only had one size left and it's super large. Um because that was the only size they had left. But um, I think it'll be fun just for lounging around the house. And so I got a couple of t-shirts and 100% proceeds went straight to the Donkey Sanctuary. So I love that. I went with a friend of mine. I'm going to insert a couple of pictures here from our time um, this morning. So it was really fun. Did you know the donkeys live to like, what do they say? 40 or 50 years, 30 to 40 years, maybe somewhere in there. A lot older than I thought that they lived. So that's your fun donkey fact for the day. Uh, yeah, so we just got home. We went to uh, uh, breakfast, not dinner, breakfast, and then we went straight to the donkey sanctuary. So it was really, really fun. It was so crowded by the time we left, so we're glad that we went there kind of first thing. And we did not see the eclipse. Um, we even had cloudy days today, so we didn't see anything. I didn't notice anything different. It was just like a regular cloudy day. So hopefully you got to see some part of the eclipse wherever you are located because that would be really fun. Um, the other big news from this week is um, I signed up for the Jingle Ball, which is put on by Lindy Stitches, and there's several other great designers. They're going to be holding classes. Uh, it's a virtual retreat. It is held the first weekend in December. I think it's like the second, third, fourth, whatever that starts Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, you can still join. Um, so it's $10 to get in the door. And then if you want classes, you pay extra for whichever, sign up for whichever classes that you want. And there are a couple, I think, of free classes. The last year was the first year. I did not go last year. Uh, I can't remember why, but I'm going this year and I got into all three of the classes that I wanted. So I'm super excited about that. So let me know if you're going to the Jingle Ball as well. So that would be really, really fun. Um, I had Thursday and Friday off work this week. Um, it's our fall break. So I took a couple days off, which has been, it's been really busy, but it's been really, really good. I uploaded a stash dive, uh, which was so much fun to do, except now I want to start everything. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to review the comments and I'm still working on comments from last week's regular floss too, but it was so much fun to do. Um, but I really do. I want to start absolutely everything. I was able to, um, par down my stash by like maybe three or four charts that I like kind of assessed and thought, am I really going to stitch this or could I pass it along? Uh, so out of everything I have, you know, it's all basically... So I'll basically stay safe for a couple of charts, but that's good. That means I'm buying what I like. Uh, so that was really, really fun to do. It was fun to kind of look at everything I have and touch everything I have. And then literally the next day I went to Acorns and Threads. <laughs> so we'll talk about that um, in a minute. But um, yeah, so it's been it's been a good it's been a good week. It's been a very busy week. Uh, and you know, it's Saturday. I'm going to film this video and then I think I'm going to go take a nap while the video is uploading. So how about that for a fun Saturday? So I had one question, um, from Tom and Jerry seven, seven, eight is the YouTube name. Tom and Jerry seven, seven, eight says that they are relatively new to stitching, which is great. Welcome. We love people who are new to stitching because we want people to enjoy this craft that we love so much and we want it to be popular and we want uh, it to, to live on. So welcome. We're super glad that you're here and asked a really great question about washing a project. Um, so they said, 
I forgot to wash my non-color fast threads before starting this project. Now the project is finished. And so they're wondering about, should I wash it? Uh, and this is really interesting. So make sure you leave your comments down below on what you do with washing. I have never personally washed a project of mine, whether it's color fast or non-color fast threads. I have never washed a project. Um, now, that said, I have not finished a HADE, which are really big. Their HADE stands for Heaven and Earth Designs. They're known, they are not the only ones who do like full coverage, really large, detailed pictures, uh, but they're um, one of the more popular ones. Um, sometimes those can take literal years to finish. And so sometimes the edges can get a little dingy. And so sometimes people will wash those. DMC is supposed to be color fast. Um, I have heard stories of really bright, like red. I've heard stories even of color fast reds, somewhat bleeding if it's right next to a lighter color, like a light yellow or light, um, white, uh, anything like that. Um, but you should be able to put in, uh, they sell in the laundry aisle at grocery stores. They sell little sheets that like color catchers. I think they're called color catchers that you could put, I wouldn't put it in the washing machine, but if you hand wash it, you could put it in there that would catch some of the bleeding if you really do want to wash your project. Um, but let us know down below if you wash your projects, um, how do you do it? I mean, I wouldn't do it with non-color fast, but I wouldn't worry about washing the project. I've never washed a project. So I don't know if that helps or not, but uh, Tom and Jerry, read through the comments below because you'll get a good variety of opinions um, and helpful tips if you are wanting to wash your, your project. But I have never personally washed a project before. So I can't give any more advice than, than that. Okay. I have no finishes this week. Uh, and I'll explain why I really thought I was going to have one, but I do not. So let's get into our whips. So first up is my 25, seven piece, which this month I am doing the black cat season series by Lindy stitches. And there are six parts to this. I have all six parts. This is part one, and it's called Midnight Walker, and it says Midnight Walker Shadow Stalker. And I am stitching this on the called for 32 count Blackberry Latte by Grace Notes Fabrics. And this is where I got to. So this part is all done. Um, it's just the words Midnight Walker. <laughs> Uh, so I just have the words and then there is a free, um, like, what do you call it? Like, so the chart ends at midnight or shadow stalker. And then on her website, there's like a free little border down here, which I think I'm going to do, but I probably won't do that right now. I'm going to go on when I finish this one, I'm going to go on to the second one um, and kind of, I'm going to do three across two down. And then when I get to the third one, I'll decide, do I want that border, which I probably will. <laughs> and then I'll put the border in um, and then I'll move down. This is going to go on my year of whips as a finish for next year. I know. I know. So that's where I got to. This is super fun, super cute. Right as I finished, um, I'm going to insert a picture here. Um, right as I finished putting the whiskers on the cat, Jack crawled into my lap. Uh, so it was super cute. It was perfect timing. I was like, oh, we need a side-by-side -side picture here. Um, so that was really cute. But this is super fun. Uh, it goes pretty fast. I mean, I only work on it 25 minutes a day. So, but yeah, we have the first one almost done. So there you go. Black Cat Susan. This is Susan? Black Cat Season. Yes, that's what it's called. And then, just loosening the Q snaps. Okay. So then I pulled out uh, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Because I'm trying to give this a little bit of love this month since it is October. So this is what it will look like. I am on here on block four. Uh, so what I did is I worked on this house and I worked on some of the bats. So I only gave this one day this week. I'll probably work on it most Saturdays, I think, this month. So I finished this large bat here. And then this house is mostly done. I just had to have to add the chimneys. Like this one has chimneys. I just have to add the chimneys to it. 
So that's what I got done in one evening. So that's pretty good. Uh, so then there's just like a bunch more bats and some words and stuff. So I don't know. This might, this block might actually get done this month, which would be nice. Then I'll be a third of the way done, which is good. Um, so that's Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Oh, and I'm stitching this on 32 count vanilla latte by De Stitch Me. I think it's a great fabric for, um, all of my Hawk Run Hollows are stitched on the same fabric. Then next was Seasonal Sunday. So I pulled out, um, Autumn Montage. This is charted by, uh, Pain Free Crafts. And the artwork here is by Janet Stever. And I'm way up here in the first block. It's a pretty one. I really like stitching on these. Okay, so these I am stitching all of my montages on 32 count Lugana. I have cat hair all over it. 32 count Lugana. Uh, and so this is where I got to. So I did a bunch of fill in basically up here. So you can see a lot of that yellow. And I'm going to try to kind of continue working down and then over. But you can see this is how big this particular it's not very tall it's but it's long um last Sunday I got 426 stitches in and I'm at 0.75 percent of the way done <laughs> so not quite to one percent yet but it's really pretty these yellows are really pretty very autumnal uh, I love that oh one of the things I meant to show you let me okay let me show you on this one I was tagged by Gary and Ronnie uh, for hashtag show your back. They tagged me to show the back of my work, which fine. I will show you the back of my work. Um, so this is the back of Halloween and Hawk Run Hollow. I don't worry about my back at all um, because it won't be. I mean, I don't carry super far if I think it will show or if it's not like a uh, full coverage. But so there's my back, and again, there's the front. But I don't do anything where I'm worried about it. And then I wanted to show you on the montage, which is going to be full coverage. You can see, like, look at that. I carry it way over there. I carry all over. There's a lot of carrying there. That's part of the fun of full coverage for me is I can do these ridiculous carries because it's going to be covered by other stitches. Now, if there were already stitches say down here, I would try to bury them a little bit just so it doesn't get snagged, but I also don't always do that. So there is hashtag show your back. And I am next going to tag Miss Dina of Half Stitch Cross Stitch to show your back. Um, I know she's on vacation right now, so we'll have to make sure that she knows that she was tagged um, for show your back. So that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next up is uh, Glory to the Newborn King, which is in this issue of Stony Creek Cross Stitch Magazine, Autumn 2020. But they also do sell it as a standalone chart. So you don't have to buy the whole magazine. And this is what it will look like. This is on my year of whips for this year to get it done. And I'm kind of down in this area. Okay, so right in there. So I'm I'm getting there. So, this is where I'm at right now. You can see I still have a thread, which I kind of forgot about, um, attached to a needle there. So, I got Glory to Newborn K done. <laughs> I got this border done. I got this done. Hopes and fears of all the years are met in the tonight. I have a so this back stitch over here is replicated over here. I have the crown over here that's replicated over here to do. And then I came down here, which is, this is like the second to last banner. And I actually ran out of this green that you see in here. Um, this green, it's also up here. It's a great green. It's called Lily Pad. And it is Creek's Colors. So I think it's, it's not one, I ran out on Thursday and normally I'd be like, well, great. I'm going to Acorns anyway on Friday, but this is one. I think you can only get it from Stony Creek. So like it isn't, I think it's a Stony Creek color. So I had to order, I actually ordered two skeins of it and I'll tell you why in a minute, but this is where I got to. So <laughs> 
I could have kept going on this, you know, because I still have other stuff to do. Like I could finish Glory 2. I have to put in the, I have to put in the crown. I have to write out King, do that, um, branches over there, which I still could pull out and do. Um, I moved the Q-snaps a couple of times on this one. So this is definitely getting there. I'll show you again where we're at. Um So you can see I have the, and that crown, I have the, there's another candle flame on top of that eye. Um, I think I have to put in, I have to put in the word years and that border there. This one is mostly done. I might have one more tree to put in because I had to, I couldn't fit the whole width of this in the cue snap just barely, but I have like one or two more trees to put in. And then I'm right down here, um, like right in here before I ran out. Um, and then I have that small border to do. And then it will be done. Well, then the beading. I am back stitching on this as I go because it is a stony creek. And so the back stitch can be quite a lot. But this one actually isn't too bad. It's just there's a lot of words that are back stitched. So I'm just kind of doing it as I go. Um, but this lily pad color, it's a beautiful green. And there is a um, DMC conversion. But if I use the DMC conversion, I wouldn't get the variegation which is why I paused on this and ordered it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, I might work on these other bits um, until it comes in, but um, we'll see. We'll see. But I ordered two skeins because one to finish this up, but because I am starting a year in stitches by the Victoria Sampler next year, um, some of these trees, I think lily pad would be really great for some of these like evergreen trees. Uh, so I got some for that. We'll see if I don't use it for that. I'll use it for something, something else. So I probably didn't need two whole skeins, but you know, I can't travel alone. Right. I did get a chart too, I think. Um, uh, but I for I forgot what I got. Oh, I think I got floral alphabet from, um, JBW designs. Okay. So glory, um, I stitched on that for Year of Whips. I also accounted for this month's acrostic for Magazine Monthly Challenge. This, the acrostic for this month is self-care. And I worked on Glory to Newborn King for S um, because of Stony Creek and L for lyrics because it's lyrics to him. So because I ran out of the floss I needed to continue working on that, I decided, well, I'll pull out my other Year of Whips to finish for this year. Uh, Thanksgiving Harvest Fairy by Mirabilia. So this is what she will look like when she's done. Because I figured, why not Why not work on her? Because I want her done too. So I did. Uh, I worked on her last night. This is on, I think it's a 28-count artichoke linen. And this is where I got to. So I finished filling in her dress. Her dress is completely filled in. I gave her some shoes. Um, the empty spaces are going to be beads. And then I came over here and fill and started on some of the vines. So basically all I have to do in terms of cross stitch is there's some vines over here and then I can go up and there's some back stitch and start beading and then she will be done. So we're getting really, really close. And of course her face has some back stitch. There's a bunch of back stitch in it, um, but the cross stitching is almost done. And everywhere you see empty spaces is beads. So that was really fun to kind of be like, okay, well, what am I going to work on? I'll work on this other piece. So that'll be fun. We'll get in there. Um, I, you know, it's, um, I, I have no doubt that both of these will get done maybe even this month yet. So that's really fun and exciting. So that's what I worked on this week. Um, I do have some haul and I have some stitchy kindness. I'm looking around because I'm trying to figure out where to start. <laughs> okay, let's start here. So I, uh, from Fat Quarter Shop, I get two fab, uh, floss of the month. This is Classic Color Works floss that I get. I got these colors. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, I just love them together like this. And this comes, they're doing it alphabetically. So Cerise. Is this beautiful pink? Cerise. Try to keep it in alphabetical order. Chai. 
That's a beautiful, like, tan. It's really light tan. It's gorgeous. Cherry Cobbler. Pretty. Uh, cherry Tomato. So that's almost, that's like a more pink than red, I would say. That's beautiful. Chili Pepper. Great autumn orange. Orange red, red orange. And Chesapeake Bay. Just this beautiful blue. And then you put them all together and you just get this gorgeous. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. So I got that in the mail. Then I got my, in the mail also, I got my last tiny modernist woodland Christmas ornament. This is part 12 of 12 and it is the Nutcracker. So this one will also, this, all 12 parts um, will also go on my year of lips for next year. I have, yeah, so I got that. So now that series is done. Um, then um, I met my friend Tammy, who you have actually met. Um, I did a um, floss tube with a friend with Tammy, and I showed you, um, oh, she finished those crosses for me for my friend. Um, and then I gave her, um, so we met yesterday at Acorns to do a little shopping together and to have lunch together. And then um, she finished a pillow for me. Um, she's the one who is doing some finishing work. So I'll leave her contact information down below. If you want, if you have finishing work for her, uh, you can make arrangements with her. Um, but so this is floral pumpkin that I finished. I did it on um, fabric, a 28 count, I think dove gray fabric. And I gave it to her and I said, I want a fall pillow. And you guys, it's so good. Look at that. Oh my God. I freaking love this so much. Look at the purple Chanel. She said she went like all over to all the stores to find a purple that worked. Um, look, so these are purple beads up at the top. It's kind of hard to tell on the screen, but they are purple. And then down here is purple, like the, whatever they're sitting on. So there's the purple. It's perfectly stuffed. It's firm, but not like going to pop, if that makes sense. And then the back is this very pretty um, autumnal brown with um, a, a, like a mustard yellow patch on it where she filled it. It is so good. I love it. I think it turned out even better than I thought. Even better than I thought, honestly. It's so good. Look at that. Isn't it great? And then the back. And so we're going to add this to our little scene behind us here, probably over there. Maybe we'll, we'll add the pillow so you can see it. Um, but yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Tammy. It is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, if you have finishing, um, reach out to Tammy and give it a try. I'll leave her email down below for you to, to contact her. She's fantastic. Um, okay. So then at Acorns, um, I, they, Acorns in, I don't know, usually November, December, they sell a booklet, which has a coupon every month and every month it's something different, like 20% off threads, 20% off fabric, 20% off your whole order, draw a token. And that's the percentage off you get. It's really fun, uh, way to like kind of go shopping. Um, so this month's coupon for October was 20% off your total order. So I wanted to make sure that I took advantage of that. Uh, so I got another pack of uh, Annie's Keepers. They're 300 a pack because I use these all the time just as thread drops. Uh, so I got another pack of that, which is good because I was starting to get a little low on that. Because um, I use them for projects and all that good stuff. I got a couple more Peacemakers needles, size 26, because I was just running low. So I like the Peacemakers. Well, I like the Pat Carsons, but they're no longer made. But Peacemakers, I feel like, is a good substitute. Um, and then I am wanting to restart this Crochetta Go Go um, Advent Calendar. It's so good. It's so pretty. Um, and so 
I started it, I don't know, a couple years ago and dismantled it. And I actually took it off my whip list, so it's not even counted in my whips. Because the fabric I chose was a Pictureless Plus, and I was doing two threads on 32 count Pictureless Plus, which is just too tight, and I wasn't liking it. Um, so I decided to restart it. And so I was looking for fabric, and so I got this is called this is a color and cotton. It's called aged paper. Um, it's showing up as pink. Yeah, that's kind of, that's pretty good. It's not as pink as it showed up. It's very much a tan. I'm trying to find something white to hold it against. And it's still showing up as pink. It's tan. It's definitely a really good close to this color. So I, and this piece is much bigger than I would need, but I figured, well, with 20% off everything, I might as well get a big piece because I will only need half of this. I think I have to do, redo my calculations and then I'll have another half for something else because it's a good neutral. So I got that. And then I actually really like this one too. I actually couldn't decide between the two. So I got them both, but I think I am going to go with the aged paper. And then this one is by Lap and Loops and it's called Jackalope. And it's a, this one is a little more pink I think undertones so we set them next to each other you can't really tell a difference this one is much more tan <laughs> you know, just have to trust me for that um, and then right when you walk in the door there are bags that are ba made by Corey so I got another Corey bag isn't that gorgeous look at that I love love this fabric um, and then it comes with, it always has like a really beautiful, uh, scissor fob on it that she has, that she makes. So I love this bag. I couldn't resist this bag. So I got that. Um, I think, oh, and then at the checkout, I was innocently checking out at Acorns and they had this cute little finish right up by the checkout counter. Um, and I was like, I think I need that chart. This is by Stitches by Ethel. It's called Evergreens of Peppermint, and it was just so cute. It was so tiny, and it was just really, really darling. Um, so I picked up this, and then I got, there are three little peppermint buttons, so I got those as well. It's small. It's 85 by 55, so I don't think it'll take too, too long. It just calls for DMC. Maybe you could do some Krynek for, like, the stars and stuff. Um, but I just thought it was really cute. So I got that. Oh, it does decorate the Christmas tree with Mill Hill beads. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It's really cute. So I got that as well. And that's everything I got at Acorns. I did, on my way to Acorns, I did drop off Winter Quakers to be framed. Uh, so I'm super excited about that that um the frame oh my gosh it's very different from the other three seasons but it is perfection and I'm so excited to be able to show it to you then I got some stitchy kindness in the mail so first up let me make sure I have everything here um from my friend EJ this beautiful card that I think she stole from her aunt her aunt makes these cards and so she stole it um, so that was really pretty. And then when she was in Minnesota, she got me this Oofta, um, needle minder, which I love at Stitchville. Oofta. My family says Oofta all the time. And then in that package, she included, um, some little finger tongs, snack tongs, so you can eat and not get your fingers dirty, um, and to, um, go back to your stitching like that and then she included a I think this is for your glasses which is great because I am always losing my glasses and it's blue so I love that so thank you so much EJ that was really sweet of you and I appreciate a little goodie package and then I got another stitchy kindness in the mail the sweet card from my friend Debbie look at that sweet card and oh my gosh you guys look at this 
she crocheted for me a um, like a cow in blue. Look at that. And it has little sparkles on it. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. It's a little warm today, which is the only reason why I'm not wearing it. But look at that. She's so talented. She was showing it on her. I, I made a joke. I shouldn't be joking because I was like, oh, do you need my address? Because she, she made a whole bunch of these. And I was like, my favorite color is blue. Do you need my address? And then this shows up in the mail. And now I feel kind of bad. But also I'm like, yay, it's gorgeous. I can't believe. The talent in this community is just amazing. So thank you so much, Debbie. I love having your handiwork. And you're always so sweet and generous to me and with me. Um, and I appreciate you so much. So yes, when it gets colder, I'm definitely going to be wearing that. And I don't feel like a little hug around my neck. So thank you so much. I think that's everything for haul and stitchy kindness. I'm looking around to make sure I have everything. Okay. So let's do giveaways. My desk is a disaster, but we're going to do giveaways. So we gave away three um, Year in the Woods charts. So first up is the owl one. And Joanne Pacheco, you won this. I met Joanne at Stitching in the Wild. She sat at our table. So Joanne, I do need your address. So um, if you want to email me at czookstitch at gmail.com, your address, and I will get this sent out to you. Next up is the bat, and my friend Linda Fisatola uh, won this. So, Linda, I already have your address, so I will get that in the mail to you. And last but not least was the ferret, and Verpy, Verpy, you won this. I have your address, and I have something else to send you, too, because you won a little bit ago. So I'll just put both of your winnings in the same package. So there's that. So then uh, for today, we'll do two giveaways. I meant to do this one a couple weeks ago. Um, we're going to do Heartstring Samplery Cross Stitch Nation because I showed it finished, FFO'd, framed, and everything. So it says, I belong to the Cross Stitch Nation. You can use whatever floss you want to, uh, um, to personalize it. Uh, if you would like, so to be entered to win, these are open internationally. Um, don't say giveaway or win or anything like that. Um, you can just say the word belong. Because it says, I belong to the Cross Stitch Nation. So just say the word belong. And then the other one, so this one is the uh, floral pumpkin that I just showed you. It is only the chart. So you will need to supply your own floss and your own beads. It, um, you wouldn't have had enough beads anyway. Like there were very few beads left over, to be honest. Um, so it's just the chart only. Um, but it tells you, it uses DMC floss and it tells you exactly the floss numbers that you need. So that should be pretty easy to source. And then there are a lot of mill hall beads, but, um, you know, if I figure if you want this, there's also this leaf button on here, right here. Now, I honestly think it would look fine without that leaf button. I actually don't even usually notice that it's there. So, I mean, do what you will, but I, and they give the numbers and everything of, of this. Um, so if you wanted that exact leaf button, you know, you could get it. Um, but it's, um, I think it would be fine without it. Like it wouldn't be like, what's missing there? I don't think because so much you're looking up here, right? With all the beads and the flowers and that type of thing. So that's just my personal opinion, but so it's just the chart only, um, and if you want, if you want it, um, say pumpkin, pumpkin. Okay. So those are our giveaways for today. So our plans now for this week, our plans are what well, was going to be to finish glory to the newborn King. I don't think that's going to happen this week. I am going to, however, try to finish Thanksgiving fairy. So hopefully you will see a finish next week. I'll do my seasonal Sunday with autumn montage. Um, I will continue working on the black cat season for 25 seven. Um, auto montage finish Thanksgiving fairy. And then, um, in between while I am waiting for the thread to come from, um, 
play or oh Stony Creek from Stony Creek. Um, I think this was going to be a little bit later in the month, but I can just move it up. I'm going to pull out with the needle too by Lila Studio. This is my theme piece for the month, which the theme for this month for Magazine Monthly Challenge is Retreat. And I started this at StitchCon last year. So that's a retreat. And I will show you where I'm at. Now, so I'm going to give it a, like three days. So I'm hoping I can finish Thanksgiving Fairy in a couple of days and then work on this for a few days. This is where I'm at. It's so pretty. I like how much is going on. Oh, Anne, sweet Anne, my friend. I was saying last time I showed this that I don't know what the fabric is. I have to go back and check. She went back to my videos and checked for me. This is 32 count Sahara. And I got it from Jen's Stitching Niche. So thank you so much, Anne, for doing the ache work for me. I appreciate that so much. So that is that fabric. And so we'll get a few days put in on that. And then next weekend is 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. So I usually, I aim to do about 18 hours, which is about six hours a day. That's really realistically all I can do. Um, and so this year, my plan for 24 hours of cross stitch is that I will give um, nine hours to, um, it was Cardinal Cottage and Cat Alphabet. And um, so it's, Cardinal, so this is the last 24 hours of cross stitch that is put on by um, by Jen. There's a Facebook group just called 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. Um, so it's Cardinal Cottage, so this is the last one for the year. So Cardinal Cottage, um, this is charted by Hayde and artwork by Donna Gelsinger. It's going to come out, I'm just way up in here. It doesn't even look like much, honestly. Um, but I'll show you, I'm doing this on 18 count Ada. And I mean, you can start to see some of the trees and stuff coming in, but it's mostly still background. You can see some of the leaves, I guess, coming in. But I want to work on this. So this will get, well, I'll see you partway through 20 hours, 24 hours of cross stitch next weekend. But this will get a total of nine hours next weekend, I'm hoping. That's the goal. Um, and I, next year, my plan for my hates, because I really missed working on these regularly this year. Is going to be, I'm going to do a monthly rotation on them again. So they'll get some good love. So that is where I am at. So I'll have a day's worth of work done when, by the time I see you next time. And I think that is everything. Don't forget to bug Miss Dina about showing her back. Um, and maybe she can tag someone else. And then otherwise, I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.